I started writing a movie about me and the kids, and it was all fun, and then I was like, I'm missing something, and I met Christian Patrick at um, a screening of Interior Leather Bar at uh, New Fest in New York, and I was like, the leather daddy is my missing piece of <laughs> <laughs> And I was like, the way that this babysitter is gonna make his full journey is gonna be like, um, financially by not film people. Um, if you look at the same movies, are kind of taking this, the grants from all the different, like Tribeca, Sundance, everyone's awarding the same people, and it looks like it's sort of like, you know, one person gets something, then everyone's in there giving something. And um, a queer film that's funny, that's also strange, it was really hard for people to get behind it. But then individuals who are not in the film world or in, like the industry are just like, I fucking love it and I want to help you finish it. And those are the people that have the hearts. And then also you get amazing actors um, who also believe in it and are willing to do you know, a crazy 16 day shoot in the middle of hot New York City's August. And uh, our casting director, Henry Russell Bergstein, he just got nominated for an Emmy for Succession. And you know he believed in us. Like, Ben and I met him in a Dunkin' Donuts. <laughs> and he was like, why do you think you can make a movie? And he answered, and I guess he He bought it for some reason. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And um, so he gave us this amazing ensemble, and uh, I'm talking too much. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I mean, Dan, obviously you, you had a lot to do with getting this put together. I'm wondering about uh, what brought you to it, and then also, you know, how did the dynamic work between the two of you start splitting things? And uh, also curious about if your decision to shoot on 16. Yeah, so um, there's a lot there. Um, so we, <laughs> we met, I was working in a coffee shop. Mark was babysitting, I was working in a coffee shop. <laughs> he wasn't getting cast in anything, I wasn't directing anything. Um, and we, yeah, we, I think we bonded over the script. And, and for me, the central relationship was always Mark and Milo. Um, and that's, I think we talked about that a lot and that's where we felt like, oh no, we can make this movie together. Um, we see this the same way. Um, we, we decided to shoot on 16 millimeter because, well, there's so the leather daddy, who's this kind of shaman figure that arrives out of a cupcake. Out of a cupcake. <laughs> <laughs> um, his his whole aesthetic is based um, pretty directly in in the 50s, 60s, 70s, the like Kenneth Anger um, tradition. Kenneth Anger shot on 16 millimeter in his films. And Mark, he's kind of straddling these two eras, the 60s, 70s, and the 90s. He's a nostalgic character. He lives in the past, and we felt like 16 millimeter would, would do the job of, of creating that, that nostalgic distance, almost, that, that you need. Um, I don't know, what, what was the question? No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> Um, for Patricia, you uh, continue to do a lot of really great TV work, but you also uh, have worked with some amazing indie filmmakers. What was it about this project that, that uh, you know, got you interested in and got you wanted to participate? You mean besides, besides the speed work? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I really love the character and, and uh, Mark immediately. So, yeah, I thought it was really fun. And um, uh, I think the film was really interesting. Um, it's changed a lot. I saw it an earlier cut a long time ago, but it's really changed since I saw it. There's stuff in it that I never saw before. I think, yeah, so that was kind of a first viewing. Y'all are really good. <laughs> 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 I like seen everybody else. <laughs> well, I have to say, Patricia was also like kind of the second missing piece because we shot in two phases. Um, we shot most of it in 16 days, and then all because we didn't know what we were doing, <laughs> Mark went back and wrote new scenes that included Patricia's character, um, and that makes the movie. I, think. Yeah. I mean, I mean, kind of all of the elements: the animation makes the movie, the score makes the movie, Patricia makes, I mean, and all of these people up here make the movie. But um, it was a learning process, like continually, and, and that's the kind of 
Yeah. Yeah, yeah, she did. Uh, she came in and she helped me develop that character. I knew the, my character of the, uh, the mom was the reason that the way Mark is the way he is. <laughs> and I wanted to see her. And she came in and um, helped us develop really fast. Like, we were, we were writing, you know, dialogue. That line about um, all the unbearable people come here in New York City, that is all her. <laughs> I think that comes experience, you know? <laughs> she knows, she knows New York. And, um, and that was really special. And, and you mentioned the animation. And, um, our animator was in Paris, and he um, was inspired by this person who would burn into the 16 millimeters. So there was like that glowing feature in there. And then John Natchez, who is our composer, he brought the, the movie to life, and he, I wanted a fairy tale. I wanted um, something a little bit of uh, like a Wes Anderson vibe, but also um, uh, Spike Jones. I don't know. I wanted this like kind of magical. It, he's feel. here, by the way. I don't. I, I think right. John uh, is, um, yeah, he was for, here. Our composer. Yeah. Can you give him a round of applause.
and Oz was going to be this gay mecca um, for him, and that's what the drawings were um, in his head. And then you talk about the artist who found the two drawings. Yeah. Well, I mean, I can't talk about it, but you found both of the major artists that we that we use. So, the, so the the drawings that you see on the paper were uh, Casey Lowe, who's a, a, an artist from Colorado. He lived in Colorado when he found them. Um, that you found on Instagram. That was that was making these drawings that were kind of they were somewhat sexually explicit, but also really beautiful and. Um, had a melancholy to them that I think that was another one of the things that we connected to about Mark, Mark's character was his melancholy. So um, he just he was the perfect person to be the to be Mark's hand. And then and then um, uh, Antoine. Antoine, sorry, yeah, Antoine, the animator, um, showed this amazing. Um, you already talked about this. Oh yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. Um, the, the kind of like, as if he's inscribing on 16 millimeter, which really brought out the 16 millimeter that we were working with and made that more kind of uh, loaded, I think. And um, I, that's where they came from. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, to be honest, like when you're making a film and you're like, oh, I can't go back and shoot that. Like the animation, we were like, let's accent something to, to like pretend like as if we shot a whole other scene with a bunch of actors. Like, we didn't really need to, but you, you think, oh, I need to see, I need to shoot more. But really like some of that animation just like helped like lift up the emotion. Yeah, well, so there was a lot of animation in the script that is not in the movie and that you would have thought, okay, we need to get this eventually. And then I thought uh, like, I think really to Mark's credit in the, in the post-production, finding ways to use animation that were never in the script that helped tell the story um, that was emerging as we were editing. We didn't know it was there in the first place, but Mark worked closest with Antoine to, to find those animations that really brought out some beautiful moments, like flying the floating days around us. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think we have time for one more. Yes, sit down right I used to be a nanny in New York City in the 1980s, so um, you, you, you totally nailed the father who wanted everything to be about the kids, because I worked for a couple, like the characters you and the other actors played, and I was curious, were they, yeah, uh, were, they, um, were they based on the parents of the kids that you babysit? Um, the kids that I babysit in Chicago, they had amazing parents. It was when I moved to New York that I was working for like eight different families, and those parents ranged from like monsters to like sociopaths, <laughs> brilliant, brilliant academics, like that might have also been those other things. I don't know, but it was just a wild, like Park Slope, Brooklyn. Like, I was going to say, did you work in Brooklyn? Yeah, yeah. and uh, uh, yes, uh, the characters off of several parents. Um, and I never did leave a dick drawing in the kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> so what, what is next for coming? What uh, other chances will people have to see the film? Uh, we're going to be in, well, we're going to be here on Sunday. Again, at the Anonymous screen in a 440 seat theater. So tell everybody you know. <laughs> everybody. Yeah. Wait, uh, where are we? We're here in this building. We're not in this? In a 440 seat theater. Big one. Yeah, 11 a.m. Apparently, people are lit at 11 a.m. Flying gigs. And then we're going to Dublin uh, for Gay Film Festival. And then we're also Gay's is the first weekend of August. And then we have a theatrical with Breaking Glass Pictures, who acquired the movie. They're here tonight. <laughs> limit theatrical, but I know we're going to be in New York um, in the fall, maybe October or November, it's not for sure yet. Um, yeah, so people in New York will, I don't know, I can have go out. <laughs> Excellent. Well, congratulations to you and everybody on your work on this film. This is terrific. Thank you all for coming. Please come back.